gives this woman to be married to this man? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dearly beloved, you may sit. <laughs> Minor detail. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of God to witness this marriage of Hannah and Ryan, to surround them with our prayers and to share in their joy. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation, joining together a man and a woman as one. It signifies the holy union between Christ and his church and therefore is to be honored by all people. The uniting of this man and this woman in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy. Let us give thanks to God, then, for the gift of marriage and ask his blessing upon them. Ryan, do you take Hannah to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others remain faithful to her as long as you both shall live if so please answer i do i do anna do you take ryan to be your husband to live together in the covenant of marriage 
Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others? Remain faithful to him as long as you both shall live. If so, please answer, I do. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your son Jesus Christ into the world to reveal your love to all people. We ask that you enrich Ryan and Hannah with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love, and grant that we all may celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. We'll continue with the Bible readings. Our first reading is from Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds everything and anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me. Everything you've heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Second reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who think worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you still are not ready. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among us, you are not worldly. You are not acting like mere humans. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, you were not mere human beings. What, after all, is Apollo, and what is Paul? Only servants, through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters has one purpose, and they each will be reward, rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service, and in God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wide builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one always laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Billy Graham once said, man hungers for love, and God ignites the fire of affection in another heart. And two hearts are made complete in the bonds of holy matrimony. And when Hannah first asked me to officiate her wedding, um, I, I warned her that she would have no control over what I was going to say. It's always a little dangerous, Hannah. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I am her uncle, so we go back a long ways, and since birth, I've always reminded her and her siblings that I was her favorite uncle. Sorry, Mike, but I got the microphone up here, so. <laughs> I was a little surprised that he, she agreed to do this after the threats and the proddings that I'd always given her as a child, and she's shaking her head, yes. But for the honor, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Now, Hannah, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. But 78 years ago, on this day, your great-grandmother, for whom you have her namesake, Elaine, was married in northwest Iowa, not too far from where you and Ryan reside presently. Were you aware of that? 
Ah, stumped you. She was. What a special day this is, the joining of two lives into one, a commitment to each other to experience the rest of your lives together. Such a blessing to exchange vows before God with someone you're close to and you choose to be your soulmate. Now, Hannah was a little slow in telling me when she started seeing Ryan, or at least when I knew that she started dating Ryan. It soon came to fi- I soon came to find out that these meetings were happening at the Iowa State Fair. Remember, Anna? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. There was always an agreement that I would be involved in the vetting of any individual that she was to date. <laughs> Must have been afraid I was going to run Ryan off. Well, anyway, you know, shortly after we found out about Ryan, or maybe it was just me finding out when you finally let me know, we were able to meet him. And, you know, we determined, he's, you know what? He's not that bad of a guy. <laughs> so, so, shaky. Yeah, it's a little tough. It's... It's hard to admit this, you know, Hannah, but uh, I have to say you did a pretty good job on your own without me helping. Yeah. Ryan, I I do need to tell you, though, you're lucky because um, had Hannah let us know about this, you would have endured a lot more questioning, a lot more than we were allowed, I would say that. And I know for one thing that Scott and I would have had you in the interrogation room, spotlight, see how you would handle the pressure. Of course, knowing you, you probably would have liked it, so we didn't do that. (laughs) So in talking with others about Ryan, they've described you as patient, tenderhearted, protective, confident, hardworking, funny, smart, handsome, strapping. I threw that last one in there for you. (laughs) I asked Ryan what he loves loves most about you, Hannah. And he told me that you challenge him to not only do better, but to be a better person, even when he doesn't agree with it. You are caring, genuine, kind-hearted, and beautiful. You are truly his best friend. Now, in getting to know Ryan, I've become highly impressed with his work ethic, his dedication. He's a great businessman. His mom shared with me last night prior to this, that he's very compassionate and caring. I see him continuing to be very successful, no matter what he chooses to do. And naturally, as I mentioned earlier, I've known Hannah since day one. And everyone agrees that she has a great heart and loves to spend time just being with people. And whenever I watch you two together, it's clear that you make make each other better. So it would seem that you're probably suitable for one another. You both both bring many gifts to this relationship. You have much to offer one another. Together, you will accomplish much more than you ever will apart. You must do everything in your power to answer those deep questions in life for one another by reminding him that he is a good man, that he's gifted and led by the Lord, and that you're proud of him. By reminding her that she's beautiful, worth protecting and fighting for, providing security, and laying down your life, as Christ did for his church. I recall Scott telling us stories when Hannah was little. She had this infatuation with baby Jesus, which is a good thing, by the way. Continue that infatuation. It'll help you through life. He stated they would ride around in Algona and look at the Christmas lights. Hannah would get so excited when the house was decorated with a nativity scene. She would start shouting, Daddy, it's baby Jesus, it's baby Jesus, it's baby Jesus. You probably remember that, don't you? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, good. It became a habit of looking for new baby Jesus sightings several times a week. Now, he went on to explain that they went to Grandma Harris's house. And Grandma Harris had an outdoor nativity scene. Well, Hannah was overjoyed. She picked up baby Jesus from the manger, brought him inside... (laughs) as only Hannah would do, and she carried him all over the house and even spent the night with baby Jesus. (laughs) So (laughs) staying with the season, when Hannah was just over a year old, um, the Tickle Me Elmo phase was starting, and it was going about. 
Um, for those of you that don't know Tickle Me Elmo, just think of an iPhone launch. That's similar to things. Shannon, my wife, worked for the Target stores, and an she had an inside track to securing one before the doors opened, the Black Friday rush, back when they used to be closed on Thursdays. And they'd fight for this coveted prize. I'll never forget a Hannah's eyes when she opened up that gift. It was one of pure excitement and joy, and I can still see her eyes. They were as big as saucers when she opened that thing up, and she didn't know what to do. She just shook. Now, even though the one-year-old child has grown, I want you both to look upon this day with that same enthusiasm. Have the joy of a child opening up a gift of sharing your lives together. Now, it won't be easy. There will be hard times. There will be times when you're fighting mad at each other, unlike today. You will have time to work at your marriage, but I want you to reflect back to this day and remember why you took your vows. What was it about each other that brought you together in front of your closest friends and family? Ryan, you will not be able to change Hannah. Hannah, you will not be able to change Ryan. You each will need to make the decision and effort to want to change. However, you can communicate and work through any issues that may arise. You owe it to each other to make sacrifices for one another to make the marriage strong. Believe me, you will change as you grow together, but I want you to keep a constant eye on growing as a couple, not just as an individual. Strive to make your marriage a beautiful melody. Now, as I mentioned earlier, your wedding vows are not primarily for today. You will say them today, but they're not primarily for today. They're for every day that comes after for the decades ahead to come. The ceremony is more than a declaration of your current love. It's a mutually binding promise of your future love together. The Apostle Paul reminds us that you no longer belong to yourself. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 4 states, For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Now, Ryan, before you get too excited, he goes on to say, likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. You're entering into a covenant with one another, and covenants are very significant to the Lord. We know this because his redemptive story in Scripture is full of covenants. There are vertical covenants in Scripture between God and his people. There are horizontal covenants between two people or groups. The marriage covenant is both vertical and horizontal. First, with the declaration you made earlier, you were speaking upward to God. Then with your vows, you would be speaking outward towards each other. It's important for you to understand that you're making this covenant in the presence of the witnesses. That's why he invited all these people to sit here and to watch who by their presence in being here are also agreeing to uphold you to the vows you will make today. And the reason the two of you will pass through the middle of the audience as you leave is to use a biblical image of sealing the covenant. This is a high calling. And I'm sure you know it's going, not going to be easy. So with that in mind, before the vows, why don't you just to let that sink in? Think about the future together. Be amazing. Marriage will bring great times. The joys of creating a family together. The trust of a friend. The friend that knows you. Someone even better than you probably will know yourself. The intimacy only you two can share. Breathe it in. You are the only person in the world that the other has chosen to spend their life with. What an incredible gift. Now time to make the commitment. Ready? Okay, take a deep breath. Please turn towards each other. Ryan and Hannah, if it is your intention to share with each other your joys and sorrows and all that the years will bring, 
declare your vows to each other as husband and wife. Ryan, please repeat after me. I, Ryan, take you, Hannah. I, Ryan, take you, Hannah. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish as long as we both shall live. To love and to cherish for as long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. Hannah, please repeat after me. I, Hannah, take you, Ryan. I, Hannah, take you, Ryan. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. As we got apart. Sickness and in health, we're going to go over to love and to cherish. There we go. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. have the ring, sir. Ryan. Please repeat after me. Hannah, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. With all that I am. And all that I have. I honor you. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Anna. Please repeat after me. Ryan, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. With all that I am. And all that I have. I honor you. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Okay, still praise each other. Ryan and Hannah, by their promises before God, and in the presence of this congregation, have joined themselves to one another as husband and wife. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let no one separate. Amen.
Gracious Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your blessings on Hannah and Ryan. Defend them from every enemy. Lead them into all peace. Let your love be a seal upon their hearts, a mantle about their shoulders, and a crown upon their foreheads. Bless them so that their lives together may bear witness to your love. Bless them in their work, and in their companionship, in their sleeping and in their waking, in their joys and in their sorrows, in their life together on earth, and their life forever in heaven, through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for and ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. Amen. Ryan, you may kiss your bride. So now, following, following the receiving line, please have yourself some refreshments in the back and then work your way back to your seats so that the wedding party can enter. It's my honor and privilege to announce to you for the very first time, Mr. Ryan and Anna Shorg. <laughs> 